Well, this holiday season, we certainly want to spotlight the uh, small businesses in our communities that uh, do great things. And this morning, we welcome our uh, friends from uh, Antique Annie's in Franklin. Good morning, guys. How are you? Welcome to the program. Doing fine. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, introduce yourselves, please. I'm Priscilla Earhart. I'm David Earhart. Nice to meet you. Tell us about Antique Annie's. Well, Antique Annie's um, actually had its origins probably from when I was a child. My mother dealt in antiques all of my life, had a large antique store, uh, then went on to other things. But later in life, she was set up in antique malls until she was 93. And her name was Anne, and she was affectionately dubbed, dubbed Antique Annie by her fellow uh, antique maulers. <laughs> and uh, after her death, uh, we just did not have the heart to sell everything in her home or things that she had still had from the antique mall at auction. And so Antique Annie's was established. Well, that's pretty exciting. So tell us about your location now. Where are you guys at? Uh, we are very excited to be at 1242 Liberty Street. Uh, we've been there since June 1st, and we have been very welcomed by the community and our customers. Um, it's just been an awesome location. Uh, just even if you're walking by, uh, before or after hours, their windows show a lot of things that you can see, and you can see all the way into the store to the back. Oh, that's pretty cool. Franklin is, is <coughs> such a unique and special uh, community. Uh, just those businesses along Liberty, the businesses on you know the, some of the side streets. I mean, it's just really a magical place. And this time of year, I know it's incredible. You must feel that from folks that are coming into your store. Absolutely. Um, you know, people come from all over. People come from Pittsburgh. People come from New York. People come from Ohio. Uh, people from Wisconsin. Uh, all over. And people come intentionally to Franklin uh, to eat, to shop, to stroll the streets. Um, and that's half of the fun of having our store and being at our store is meeting all of these wonderful people. And there's what? There's a little tiny uh, event that happens once a year. I forgot what it's called, like Apple Fest. Apple Fest, Fest. a tiny event, yeah, sure. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that brings in one or two people. Yeah. yeah. It was a little scary for us our first year <laughs> here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do we have enough merchandise? Are people going to knock things over? <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Well, when folks come into the store, what uh, what would they be able to find? What would what would they see? Well, they will see uh, antiques from the 1700s all the way up through the 1900s. Uh, we have vintage stuff. If it's eye appealing, we probably have it. Uh, we have a lot of books uh, here again from. From the 1700s on up to the early 1900s, uh, a lot in the 18, uh, mid 1800s. Uh, and that's my passion: is the books. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, what what is it about the book? What does it have to have a certain look or a certain year? Or what, what is it that grabs your attention? The looks. The looks. Uh, the looks. Yeah. And, and the history behind it. Uh, I have I have books that I, I have Oliver Wendell Holmes signed book. Okay? Really. Uh, I have a journal from 1817 that uh, was written for Congress, and it was in a fire in the State House, which at that time was Independence Hall. And uh, wow. it's like, well, is this the only surviving copy of this book? I don't know. But, you know, you can still smell the burn marks on it. Really? Yeah. So is that something that you keep in your personal collection? <coughs> yeah, it's something say, yeah. I keep in my personal well, collection. Is, is that difficult to when, you're, when you find a piece to say, boy, I really like this, or this is yes, really is. unique? Do we keep it? Or well, I know we should probably sell it, but this is pretty special. Yeah, it's, like I say, it's a piece of history, and I have no problem showing it off to people. Uh, <laughs> You can look, not, but you better not touch. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure yet. I want to sell stuff like that. It's, yeah. It, like I say, it it uh, it is a passion of mine. Well, and, it sounds like uh, you know you may have kind of fallen into this a little bit, but 
the passion is there. I mean, there's an interest in this. It doesn't oh. sound like you guys are just doing this yeah, just to do it. I mean, it's, oh, you do we, enjoy mm-hmm. researching and discovering these treasures. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's fun. Yeah, and the way we say to each other and some of our customers, we own everything for a little while. <laughs> and we enjoy it. David does most of our research. Um and we enjoy educating our customers. Uh, we have some really neat pieces. We have a demoloon from... It's, it's, a, it's a painting of a castle from 1325. The painting was made in the 1500s during the Renaissance. Really? And, uh, yeah, this it, is not it the is original. An interesting piece. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of artwork that is, is interesting. Uh, it, just takes you all over the world looking at the looking at the pictures see where it was made uh, we have one that's made in Portugal the guy uh, he his travels was in paintings he traveled the world and painted everywhere you went Wow so is is I, I would imagine uh, every day is different but part of the fun is meeting the people that come into the store part of the fun is just going after and, and trying to find these treasures to bring into the store. Uh, is that a is is that a nice mix for you guys to be able to get out and take that adventure to find some of these things? Or yeah, do you prefer to, to stay in and talk to the folks coming through? A little bit of both. Uh, we we do auctions, we do estate sales and uh, sales. It's we I'm I'm gone part of the time. Okay to to get the treasures and uh first of all watch is a store so it's it, it's a nice mix and the people that come in uh like she said you meet people from all over we had an iranian girl that was just thrilled that we had something from iran wow and uh india same same thing all over the world they come to franklin well when he brings stuff back do you look at him and go what is this? Why, why would you buy this? <laughs> or do you have similar tastes? Or I mean, I would imagine it's not just about you guys either. It's it's also thinking about your customers and what interests they've expressed to you. Yes, uh, we have a wish list uh, oh, okay. that we yep. we try to fulfill people's people's desires and their wants, and and we've done it a few times and it does feel good. And uh, the latest one. Uh, a woman was looking for a Santa Claus wreath that was made in the 1950s. Well, lo and behold, I had bought one just a week before. and Really? Yeah. I told her, yeah, I, I remember seeing it. Oh, I bought it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> now, that was one that she walked in with her wish, but we have fulfilled other wishes for people that have been in the store maybe a couple weeks ago or a month ago, and we keep our eyes open for what it is that they're looking for. And when we find it, we call them, and they come in, and they're pretty happy campers. It can be something as small as a particular dish to something as big as a particular type of piece of furniture. So, um, so there really is a, a large variety that people can discover in the store. There's a huge variety, and even if they are not antiquers, um, we do have some things that are more current, modern. They are priced accordingly. Um, we don't try to sell anything for old that is new, but you know there are a lot of people who walk the street and come into the store, and you kind of have to appeal to everyone. We try very hard to stay with things that are antiques or collectibles, but you do have to have variety. And if it's pretty and it catches our eye, and uh, sometimes we just say, yeah, I think we got to have that. It, are there moments where you, uh, somebody's saying, hey, this is what I'm looking for, and you're thinking, boy, that's hideous, but all right, well, if that's what they want. <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, we keep our we keep our eyes open. That's yeah, right. Yes, yes. It's, it's, good, good approach. <laughs> I, I do want to say another thing about antique Annie's. Our daughter um, is also involved with us and was a very big part of our decision to open the store because we had to have manpower, and um, so it is not just David and I and our taste in things, but also her taste. And sometimes when you're at an auction or a yard sale or whatever. Our eyes will go to certain things. And we all have our things that trip our trigger. Right. And um, including her. And so our 1700s inkwell was in a box. 
that she saw. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So she has an eye for some of that kind of stuff. And I tend to spot the glassware and um, the china. I uh, grew up with beautiful things. And my mother used those things. And we want people to use those things and display those things. And um, so we really love to hear when people walk in our store, oh, your store is so beautiful. You have so many beautiful things. But, you know, it's there's just something for everybody. Well, let's talk about some of the specifics. And you guys brought some items here. Now, these are great uh, things for the, for the holidays and, and, and Christmas. I would imagine, uh, you know, whether it's stocking stuffers or unique gift ideas, this is a great place to go to, to oh, look yeah. for those things. Yeah, we, we try to appeal to all people, whether you have a couple of bucks in your pocket or a couple of thousand. We have something for everybody. Uh, yeah, you, you find just about everything. We have paintings. Uh, we have just newly acquired Santa Claus here that I haven't found him yet. Hey, but look at that. He's pretty neat. <laughs> uh, items like that, you, you don't see them every place. And <clears throat> we, we are proud of them, and we put them out, and people just, they just they love really it. enjoy they it, yeah. Them. So when, when do you guys start to, to discuss the holiday season? Because I would imagine it's an important time for small businesses we know small business saturday gets a lot of attention but it's important to support small businesses all the time throughout the year um do you guys start having the conversations in in the fall about hey we you know the holidays are coming we got to start looking for some of those items to kind of stick we're, out there we're starting to <laughs> actually <laughs> i've we been on him about we need to find more vintage yeah. um christmas items because a lot of people um, really enjoy those blow mold, those big blow yes. mold Santas oh. and snowmen or the old ornaments that were once on their trees or the plastic decorations. And they come looking for those things. And I sold most of what I had in a prior year in a different location. And I'm going, we got to find this. we got to find this. So we start. You can't just wait to the end. You've got to be looking all year long. And Franklin really does a good job at uh, getting a jump on things. I think uh, at Light Up Night uh, was the week before Thanksgiving. So that, it's a nice way to really kick off the holidays in that community. And uh, the, the Wine Walk, I think, was that weekend, which brings traffic through. So I, I'm sure it's been pretty busy the last uh, number of weeks. It's busy all year round. Um, yeah, Franklin does a good job bringing people downtown. They this every every other month it seems they have an event going on, whether it's Franklin on Ice or or the Rock Skippers that come in the summertime. That's right. Uh, it just it, it's a wonderful place. Like uh, like we said, is the people walk the streets and it's a lively little town. You know, and it's it's fun to see. What. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, we also have uh, several new businesses that are in Franklin, and they have helped to draw people and keep people walking, um, and we love being able to refer people to places to eat and other stores in town, even other antique shops. We know all of them. We know their hours and their days because, you know, you can't possibly have everything that everybody wants, so we just... And everyone on the street does the same thing um, and lets people know who is oh, that's who wonderful. else is available up and down the street. That's wonderful. That's great. Uh, 822, this is the Morning Drill. You're watching it on stream television and Armstrong and listening to it on the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. Uh, we're saluting those small businesses this holiday season. And uh, Antique Annie's is with us here this morning. And uh, before we wrap things up, we'll get the exact address and how folks can find you, maybe an online presence or phone number. Uh, we'll present that to folks here in just a little bit. Uh, coming into a new year, a lot of exciting things to come at the store. Well, uh It'll be fun to take a take a break from the holiday season <laughs> uh, and and kind of revamp and yeah uh, reorganize the store. So it's yes now it's appealing to. How often is that something in your minds? Uh, is there uh, like a routine and how often you move things around? Because I would imagine somebody will walk in and they'll walk through and then maybe they'll come back another time and say. 
oh, you have this. This is great. But it was there the last time you were here. But, you know, just in a new place or in a new setting, it might grab somebody's attention. We don't have a schedule of doing that. Um, a lot of how that happens naturally is we put new merchandise out every single day. So when you're putting merchandise out, it means that, oh, you know, I got to find a space for this. And so, oh, let's move this around over here and put that there. Items, pieces sell. And so sometimes that brings the momentum to let's change this display over here. Sure. Um, big pieces of furniture come in and out, and that definitely drives <laughs> <laughs> um, changes of the way things are laid out. And you're right, people, something can be there, and people just haven't noticed it because they didn't look in that spot, so you move it, and woohoo. <laughs> yeah. I, listen, uh, my wife took part in the, the wine walk. I have about a thousand text messages with pictures from your <laughs> store, so I... I'm familiar with it now. <laughs> I need to thank our granddaughter, Brooke, because she was helping serve up food, and yeah. she's been helping me a little bit with Facebook. And she says, Grammy, are we going to do Facebook tonight? And I'm going, I don't know, honey. It's going to be pretty late. And she says, no, Graham, you've got to start taking pictures now. Yeah. <laughs> and so she was right, and it worked. Do you have folks who come in and say, listen, uh, we have a room in our house. We're trying to come up with an idea for it. Uh, we like this piece. Can you help us kind of build around you know, this look or this style? Yes. Or could you do that if somebody were to walk in and ask? Uh, yes, and we, we have a couple of customers, uh, one we call the Victorian lady, <laughs> and she just moved to Franklin, and she's setting up house and comes in and looks for accessories to put on her mantle. She tells us, I, I got this space, you know, and she wants to fill it up. <clears throat> and if we don't have anything, it's like we'll keep our eyes open. And perhaps, you know, something will fit just right for you. And, uh, it, yeah, it, it works pretty good that way. Uh, people, they do want to, they have a spot. They want something just a certain size. And it's like, okay, well, we don't have anything right now, but we'll keep our eyes open. And, it, you know, it works. Uh, people are really happy. They usually find what they're looking for and that's that makes us feel good do you uh do your customers ever share photos once they take it home and have it in place do they take pictures and show you or send it to you well All victorian the lady oh, does yeah. victorian and we lady. have had others yes like we her. have had others we say when you get it home we have people taking it across the country really and or we have shipped to people across the country and uh We'll say to them, you know, send us a picture when you get it in place, and they do. That's wonderful. That has to be pretty exciting. Do you, do you ever look at the pictures and go, oh, we should have kept that piece? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, like I say, we, we own everything for a little while. That's and right. Once yeah. it, you know, we, we like stuff to find a good home. And sometimes we'll, we will go up and above uh, what's called for us to make sure that something goes in the right spot and somebody appreciates it. Well, that's wonderful. And again, uh, it sounds like uh, the passion is there. And I think folks probably probably pick that up from you guys when they come into the store, right? Just that excitement for what you do. I think so. How you're seeing us today is how we are in the store. And uh, we've made friends. Um, we have regulars. Mm -hmm. Some people just like to come in and, hey, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, they say that, but they're, I'm sure they're looking around going, boy, that would that, that look good in the house, and that would look good. Yeah, we have to make sure that we don't talk too much to keep them from looking. <laughs> <laughs> well, real quick, uh, you guys brought a couple other items uh, that are on the table there. Why don't you talk about those? Um, this is Det Moreau's. He is a... Um, from the history of Santa, uh, he was made by Duncan Royal, which is a very, very um, high-end, exclusive manufacturer... Um, in the porcelain. pardon porcelain porcelain uh, he is an old fella um, that's really cool looking yeah he is uh, one of my prize and prides and joys this is a very hard piece for me to sell um, he was a piece that my mom had had um, for sale but he was my favorite Oh. Um, and his original value was 
pretty high up there. Um, things ebb and flow in over the years and stuff. Um, we uh, had reduced his price, and I've actually reduced it again. Now he's only $125. The original price on him was, oh, geez, I think originally around 400 Wow. Most recently, he was like 225 So I really just want him to have a good home. I don't want him to get broken. I want him to go to someone's house who it will be up on their mantle or their special place. Um, and you can see he's just, he's flowing and in motion, and yeah, he's so really cool. cool. And this piece over here, the birds, um, this is a blown um, ornament made by Sorel, also a very f another very fine manufacturer. Um, and it's the birds are inside that glass, and there's it's very intricate. Those are beautiful pieces. Oh, I got this here, there and. You go. Um, you might be amazed. It is only $14.75. <laughs> and I think you'd be hard-pressed to go into Walmart and find something that beautiful for yeah. that price. Well, a lot of uh, great uh, gift ideas, and uh, folks can stop in and visit with you. Tell us your location and where they can find you online or a phone number. 1242 Liberty Street. Um, it's on the opposite side of the street as the Barrows Theater, so okay. that makes it a little easier to yeah. find. Um, just up from Bella Kachinas. Um, and uh, our phone number is 814-518-7011. Um, you can email us or Facebook us at Antique Annie's Franklin at gmail.com and on Facebook. Thank you so much for Don't stopping in. Don't forget the Franklin. <laughs> Don't forget the Franklin. Thank you guys for stopping in, and uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. And, uh, yeah, stop in and uh, support law, uh, your small businesses. And uh, it's a pleasure meeting you guys this morning. Yes, please. Same here. Thank you so much for inviting us, and we're looking forward to maybe next year, too. Sounds good. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.